Hello everyone. This video is about the map abstract data type. So abstract data types are big concepts in data structures and computer science. And the map is a, like the unordered list, the stack, the queue, the deck, it exists in every language. And here we're gonna talk about it um, in the context of Python. So like uh, a previous video, this video is also an excerpt from something I recorded earlier. Uh, and this video follows on our video about the Python dictionary. So if you watch that, um, you're in good shape. If you didn't watch it, you're gonna see that I pick up um, some code from um, some exercises that I did in the Python dictionary video. So you may wanna follow along on that Python dictionary video if you haven't already, and I will turn it over now to my younger self. The dictionary itself though, remember, the Python dictionary is a data type. It implements the concept of a map abstract data type. And remember, abstract data types are like these big high level concepts that transcend programming language, that transcend implementation. You have maps in Java, you have maps in C++, you have maps in all sorts of language. In Python, the map abstract data type is implemented as concretely as the dictionary data type. All right, so what do you need to know about maps? They're a collection of key value pairs where keys are unique identifiers, right? You can only have one unique key, right? Uh, values are associated with the key. You can put things in a key, or excuse me, you can put things in a map. You can get things out of a map. Uh, you can delete things from a map, you can get its size, and you can test if some things are in the map, right? Um, so these are the things that you need to know how to do with a map or a dictionary, right? So why do you care about it? Why do you want to use a map? Um, they're really useful for looking up complex objects by an ID, right? So we did students, right? We had a student name and what we got was their ID back, but you could store whatever you wanted to, to be associated with that key, right? So we could define a whole student class, right? Why don't we do it? Let's not just talk about it, let's do it. Let's define a class called student, right? And uh, we need to put a constructor, right? And let's do first name, last name, uh, student ID. Okay, and we'll do self.first gets first, self.last gets, uh, oh, I called it name, sorry, self.student ID gets student ID. Okay, so I've defined this class student. Um, I probably should have defined a string, and that's okay. Um, we can put in our students, right? Let's say that what we want to have is a dictionary that looks up students or the, and the concept of a student by their um, 850 number. So let's say that students sub 850123456 gets the new student Leslie Nope and her 850 Yeah, yeah. So we're storing her 850 twice, right? But what are we doing here? Student is our own data type. It stores a bunch of different information about Leslie No. Um, and if we look, we can actually see it's put this thing in here, right? Here's students, it's size one. Uh, I've got one student in here named Leslie Nope, and this is what information I've stored about her. So I can look her up later and just ask myself, hey, tell me all about the student with this 850 number, and I'm gonna get a student object back. Now I didn't create a string method for her or a wrapper method, so I can't print her out easily, um, but I can do things like, now that I've assigned her to variable, I can get her first name, I can get her last name, and I can get her student ID, right? So, but what's in the dictionary? The dictionary has a key, 8501234567, 
and then a bunch of values associated with it. In this case, the value is the student object, right? So what I can do is I can put complex objects in the dictionary and then look them up in big O of one time. That's the key, okay? The other thing a dictionary is really useful for is counting the occurrences of an item, right? So suppose you wanna know, suppose you have a great big enormous file that's got lists of say birds in them and types of birds and when they were seen. You can keep a count of them uh, as the value in a dictionary, right? So say that I had a great big long list from the ornithology department and it said I saw a blue jay at 9 a.m. and then a cardinal at 9.02 and then another blue jay at 9.03 and on and on and on for say a whole year. And what you all you want to know is how many blue jays did they see? Well, what you can do is you can create a dictionary and you make the key, the name of the bird, bird sub blue jay. And then every time the value that's associated with that bird is the number of times you have seen it, right? So the first time you see a bird, you've put dictionary, is, is blue jay in the dictionary? No, okay, let's put it there. Dictionary sub blue jay gets one. I've seen one bird. And then every time you s encounter the word blue jay, you're like, oh yeah, I see, I've seen that before. Let me just increment its counter. A uh, very cool use of a dictionary. All right. Now dictionaries are usually implemented using hash tables. Okay. In fact, that's what Python implements its dictionary with is a hash table. Um, because indexing the hash table is big O of one, and hashing is big O of one, we achieve big O of one search time for a key, right? The downside is the list, the hash table is gonna have those empty spaces, those spaces where things aren't being used, right? Um, if you fill up the hash table, it gets expensive to resize it, right? Because resizing effectively means you gotta create a whole new table in memory and reinsert all your old values into it. And of course, you can have hash collisions, and depending on your collision resolution strategy, uh, if you're using linear probing, for example, you may wind up with clusters, and you can get start getting some inefficiencies in your hash table. All right, so how do you implement a map, right? How would you implement a dictionary? Well, you're going to do it in assignment number seven. You are going to implement a very simple map uh, implementation, um, and you're going to use a hash table. So the way you're gonna do it is you are gonna have two lists, okay? One list for the keys, one list for the values. They're gonna be the same length. So for example, 127 slots or open spaces, right? What you do is you take the key. So your two operations are putting something in and getting something out of the dictionary. So when you assign a value to a key in the dictionary, what you will do is you hash the key to one of the indexes down here, right? So if you want to associate, say, Joe with the value 62, right? Uh, let me type in a note here, right? So e.g. Uh, students sub Joe gets 62. What you wind up doing is you hash Joe, and it, let's just assume for sake of argument, it hashes to index four, okay? So you put the key Joe in the keys list at index four, and then you put the value 62 at the same index that Joe hashed to, but in the value list, okay? So you've got two arrays here, two lists, one called keys and one calls value. You hash the key, find out where it goes in the key list, which is here, and then you put the value in the same index of the values. This is what you would call a parallel list or a parallel array, right? But this is a hash table, right? You kind of have two tables here, the keys and the values, and you're hashing to the keys and then putting it in the same value. Then later, if you want to get the value out, right, you hash the key again, to see where is it, oh, it's at index four. They want the value that's at index 
that are at key of Joe, let me return to them 62. All right. Now, as you go to implement it, um, this is kind of the data structure you're going to use. Um, so you will implement a hash map data type. It's, think of it as your version of a Python dictionary. And why are you doing it if the dictionary is already there? Well, I want you to understand and appreciate how the data structure works for a hash table. Okay? So I'm going to give you the hash function. I'm going to tell you what it needs to be. You can use any form of collision resolution that you wish. Right. So if two things hash to index 10, right? say Eric hashes to index 10, how do you resolve that? I don't care. You can use linear probing, you can use quadratic probing, you can use chaining. It's entirely up to you to decide. Um, so you're going to implement a very basic map data type. And then you're going to use it in an experiment. All right? So get yourself familiar with the dictionary right, and how it works. And then that will tell you what's expected of you when you go to implement the hash map yourself. All right. So um, that's it. Uh, play around with the map um, or excuse me, play around with the Python dictionary and we'll work on assignment seven. That's what's due this Sunday at 1159. Hopefully it's a shorter assignment. Uh, but don't wait until the last minute because you do have to implement a hash table uh, to support it. Let me know if you have any questions about that, and I will talk to you in the next lecture.